Welcome agility lovers, agile lounger. Once again, here's your coach AF and I would like to invite you to this first part of mini part of a great conversation we had live with Michael Herman, one of the fellow enterprise scrum for business agility created by Mike Beadle back in the day. So what we did was a long two and a half hour conversation on all things enterprise scrum, business agility, open space, his view of open space, the way he practices it and he kind of showed it into the world. And also, uh, we had great talk on uh, the origin of, of Enterprise Scrum for Business Agility. And also, uh, so that was amazing. That was amazing. So that was a live uh, held on June 11 on our Facebook watch of the Agile Launch channel. And, uh, and it was in, 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 the, in the process of creating Agile Insider. So yes, you've probably seen a one first video. What is Agile Insider? That's going to be two things. The in-depth tips and trick for business agility, conscious agility, and conscious leadership. Everything about the true evolution of the here and now of what is business agility, um, revolving on, on very quick video tips, and also these great conversation with a fellow business agilist throughout the world. And this is the first one we offer you uh, today. So this is the first part because we decided to cut it in many parts. So we didn't cut or edit anything, only uh, snapping this two and a half hour long video and many parts of about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how we could actually adjust the situation. So here's for you this introduction. Who is Mike B, uh, Michael Orman? who is myself and the introduction of Enterprise Crown for Business Agility. And you'll see more we will go into this part, more you'll learn more about the real open space, uh, inviting agility. It's a Michael Herman project. So that's going to be at the center of these uh, mini capsule of the Agile Insider on both their Real Agile podcast for those who like to run listening to us. So here you have it. And also you could also watch us on our YouTube channel of the Agile Lounge. So thank you very much. Subscribe uh, uh, to get notified to the upcoming Agile Insiders and their Real Agile podcast. Thank you and enjoy this moment with Michael Herman. everybody i know there is uh, only five people right now on facebook but we say we bid you good afternoon live uh, from montreal at 5 p.m east i'm welcoming michael orman another beetle um but it's more than that and we're gonna see you later so if you have any questions for us go on to twitter at agile lounge and you use the hashtag uh, scrum beer x X like in 10 ramen number. So welcome, Mike. I'm really happy you're uh, with me in that uh, experiment, that Scrum Business Agility experiment, let's call it like this, to actually um, pursue or continue the, this great uh, conversation that uh, we often had with Mike Beadle and so many others. Uh, about uh, for me, I don't even want to call it a framework. I call it a state of mind, a, a way of being innovative and creative to help businesses and people uh, being better and smarter. What do you think? You know, I yeah, I, sometimes I just call it ongoing open space, but we'll have to come to that story later on. Um, but it's great to be here and be part of uh, a conversation about Enterprise Scrum. And uh, uh, we haven't had as many of those uh, together as, as uh, we used to. So this is good. Cool. And um, how do we like, because, you know, a lot of people, as you mentioned a bit uh, offline, is they will say Scrum. So they think it's Scrum. And before that is Enterprise Scrum. But even before going into um, Enterprise Scrum, Nowadays, how will you, and I will jump anytime, because actually this is not an interview. We're going to have a conversation, you and I, right? Yep. And so if you have questions yourself, Mike, ask me questions and we could share a story. But I, as I'm kind of the host by default, I would like to uh, give you the floor first 
So uh, for you, uh, your experience, uh, could you tell us about like, how do you actually uh, found business agility? What What's your journey towards or your path uh, from uh, the agility itself to that revolution of business agility that uh, our mentor was part of it? And how did you meet? Something like that. What... Well, yeah, I, I I think of it as uh, I'll tell you my biases. <laughs> the, the places the places I think I learned things, and uh, the the shapes that it it uh, made in in my brain. Um, I uh, I started out um, pretty much right out of undergrad, almost right out of undergrad. I was in, in business school, so I was trained as a finance guy. And uh, some other things, but mostly the, the numbers and the analysis and all that. And then I, I did a job uh, running big projects and, and crunching numbers for hospitals. Um, and after just a couple of years of that, I've, I'd been working with Outward Bound in Chicago. And I left my job and went off to lead wilderness courses in the Boundary Waters in Minnesota. And when I came back from that, I, I started out on a way to, to put together the adventure and the exploration and the uncertainty. And um, I mean, you talk VUCA, it's all there when you put stuff on your back and walk into the woods <laughs> or paddle into the lake, you know, you, you're living it. And so I wanted to take those experiences, expeditionary learning, and put it together with getting stuff done and making the numbers pencil out and, and making it work in a business sense. So uh, I started doing team building things with uh, Outward Bounds corporate programs. And I did uh, um, some other things, set up some self-managed teams and, and learned how to do that from some, some folks who had really kind of invented it um, after World War II and uh, in the Welsh coal mines and other places around the world. So. I, uh, I had this history of, of self-managed teams, and then I got into open space, which is sort of pure self-organization. And so I knew that, that great things could happen if you didn't impose too much on the situation. You just said, okay, we, we need to get up that hill or across this lake or whatever. Um, we need to figure out the future of the business. And if we make a space for it, it could happen. The people could do it. if We just got out of the way. Right? And so I, uh, I got in this organization development track and I, I uh, started telling stories about inviting. And uh, uh, Daniel Mezik came around and said, hey, tell me about this. And then he went off and wrote a book about it and came back and told me more about it. And eventually he helped get me trained up as a, a scrum master. Uh, well, he, he taught me all the, all the language, right? All the, all the buzzwords. And along the way, I had introduced the Agile community to open space at the Agile XP universe in 2002. And I had facilitated things for the Agile Alliance board. And so I was making these connections between Agile and open space. Uh, but, uh, you know, Daniel did his work and, and sort of, you know, I, I had a, some papers and things on inviting and he sort of made a flag and, and created a, a movement with it. And uh, so he taught me all the words and then I, I uh, uh, ended up getting a job as a scrum master and they thought the people who were hiring me thought that I might need a CSM just oh. to make sure that I didn't get rejected by the client. Oh, and the closest CSM class to me in the very next week was Mike Beadle. And it was just luck that I showed up and Mike yeah. taught and me how to be a scrum master. We talk of the early 2000s, you said, like, or it was a bit off? Oh, no, this, uh, I mean, I did, I introduced Agile and Open Space when Agile was starting in 2002 in the conference. The Ag that was the first Agile Alliance conference. And that was, um, well, I mean, it wasn't even the Agile Alliance yet. And it was 300 people. And so we did an open space track on the future of software. And that was all the stuff that, that was all the uncertainty, right? That was the, um, the stuff that, um, 
nobody knew what was going to happen next. You know, yeah, they had all the, you know, so, so somebody knew all those things. Don't you feel that the last 20 years, uh, even since the manifesto, it's it's only like we are fighting VUCA every time, everywhere with all size of business or any kind of ideas. Things are good. I'm not saying it's not good because we don't have to see it polarizing into negative or positive. Uh, but the thing is, it seems like since the uh, the end of the Cold War, even though like uh, 10 years before uh, the 2000s, it's not like the, the, the last three decades, it's only VUCA. We are right now in 2020 with a kind of a it's, VUCA on steroids. So, yeah, yeah, you know, the, the folks who did the work in the coal mines and, and um, developed this, they, they developed this very elegant way of moving from hierarchy to self-organization. They did it in two days with, with you know, relatively large groups would stand up multiple teams and they had a very uh, careful process, a way to do that. But uh, they described four environments. And I'll skip ahead. The last one, the last of the four, they just called turbulence mm. because it, it didn't, you know, the, the early, you know, the second one was about patterns and the third one was about competition. So I learned to, You know, the, the, the patterns means, oh, if I see a tree that looks like that, there are probably bananas underneath it. That's a pattern. Now I can look for that tree and find the bananas. But when I pile up the bananas in a big pile and I start eating them, and then I come back and I notice somebody's been eating on the other side of the pile. Now I'm moving into the other environment. That's competitive. But when people start hiding the, you know, taking the bananas and hiding them and the animals start taking them and everything's moving and the bananas, you don't know where the bananas are coming from anymore. That's turbulence. <laughs> so, turbulence. So that's the um, the environment these guys describe, and that's what we tend to live in. I think uh, Peter Vale um, called it permanent whitewater, but he did that in like the 80s, the 70s. I don't know when he wrote that book. Did you say Peter Drucker? Uh, Peter Vale. Peter Vale uh, wrote a book uh, called something about permanent whitewater. And that, that's to me, that's the image of this turbulence. It always you know, somehow involves water. Um, but, so. but again, I think like th those who are like very capable people are those who actually always see, always trying something, experimenting something. Like yeah. your Batman's example. Like, so if, 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 if you keep doing something and you don't have results, maybe you have to change the way you do it. No, at some point, I guess. Yeah. So, so is it not like that kind of mindset that make us being agile compared to all of those who said they do agile and you bring up the, the certification type of thing? Is it because yeah. we, are, we find that we suddenly expert as the agile manifesto will tell us there's no expert, it's just only people together cross-functional towards a goal? So, right. And the certification started, that's actually the hurdle that I could get over because I could, you know, I could plug in my, my money and my, my name and then Mike would let me in his class the next week, right? But I did 2016. I had, now I came in knowing something about self-organization and I had set up self-managed teams in this, in this uh, participative design uh, process in 1995. So I knew something about what we were aiming for with Scrum. I knew how it worked. And I'd been facilitating open space. So, I mean, sometimes the, the, the people who are, are real hung up about what Agile is and certifications and things, sometimes they get a little fussy with me, uh, uh, upset, because I say Agile and open space are same. We put all the most important stuff on the wall, and then we get it done, right? But when I facilitated in 2002, and even in 2008, when I did an open space, I think it was the first Scrum gathering that had an open space component, uh, was also in Chicago. And I was talking to people then about, hey, how do I get into this? I'm so close. You guys are doing, I mean, when I met the guys, uh, Chet Hendrickson and, and uh, Ann Anderson, who, who hired me to do the open space at the Agile XP uh, conference, I showed up at the hotel where it was going to happen. I said, okay, guys, tell me what you do. And, you know, tell me how this works. And they told me about Agile and Kanban and Scrum and you know, these methods and stuff and how they did stuff. And I just started laughing. 
I said, you guys are making software in open space. Yeah. And it took me like more than 10 years to get in and be allowed as a non-technology person, a non-software developer to be allowed into the club. So how did you get in the club? Who, me? Yeah. That, that's the thing. Yeah. Me, actually, those engineer, those God programmer, you know, those guru of, oh, we are creating scripts and code and languages. And because of us, you have a product. And because of us, you know, and you, the CX. And you couldn't designer. possibly understand what we do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing. Uh, until I took a class on, well, it was PHP for me back then to, to learn a bit of, of those code and on Symfony framework. I don't know if you. And, um, I don't play I was, that. I was, I was, I was with other stuff. Yeah, because I was like often like not pissed because I understand these kind of egos and stuff. But the funny thing is, they asked me. I was a, a customer experience designer, and also what's coming more and more back then the user experience and the UI stuff and everything. And they said to me like, no, 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 these, these projects, if we continue this type of waterfall or water scrum fall, because that was the funny thing. And those corporation I work with. And uh, they said, like, Agile or Lean will be only for the development uh, or the production uh, part of our organization. And I find it very funny because if, if procurement, if finance, if marketing are not even to the Agile, or, uh, as you mentioned, the open space, making everything visual for everyone uh, to understand the goal and vision. So uh, what the heck, a bunch of engineers uh, will, will work on Scrum, but that's a pressure type of project management. There's nothing new there. And unfortunately, even nowadays, there, I know a lot of, especially big corporations still, are still function on what I call water scrum fall. I'm not the first one to make that name up. But, but again, all those framework are nothing if nobody is agreeing about it is, are we doing this for people first? So me, that was very funny that all of those guru of programming who are building actually... Um, Simulation software for uh, the Canadian Space Agency. I was in that context, okay? Uh, so for me, I was often talking with pilots or, or people to understand what they will need yeah. as a software, of, uh, as a training software to our simulation. And uh, all of a sudden they said like, and they want to make me a project, uh, project manager. Yes, not even a product manager will have been better. Right, and, and I said no to that. I will keep to be the CX manager, you know, the customer experience manager. But other than that, the the they, two three engineer came with me. We had a cafe, a coffee somewhere, and I said like, you know, uh, you have a loud mouth. You're pretty organized. You could facilitate stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we we see you being our scrum master. I said like, what? I, I thought they talk a toastmaster. You know those guys who. Right. Speak. They just told me that I had a lot something to do with standing up and talking. Okay. Yeah. I said, like, uh, so what's the purpose? I said, no, no, no. It's the Scrum system from Jeff Shutterland. And they, they dropped me a couple of names and they gave me a book of Mike Beadle and Ken Schrauber, actually. Yeah. Uh, as Agile Software. First developed. book on Scrum. Yeah. I should have brought it with me. So this is the first literature I read in, in my journey to Scrum, Lean, and Agile. That was the book from Ken Schraber and, uh, and Mike Beadle. And then from there, I started experimenting with uh, one team. And I remember we used to hide ourselves from management to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they thought I was the project manager doing a regular waterfall project. But um, actually, we were doing experimenting with iteration. And actually, we had a wall with probably we were doing open space without doing it. I don't know. 